take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, for San Diego, it's size of the pins. Even though they were out blocked 10 to 3 last night, San Diego size at 6-2 and 6-5 in the pins can force hitters to make errors to avoid the block. And for Hawaii, which lineup will it be with Jolie Rasmussen now cleared to play? Or Haney are whole again. They can go with a small, quick lineup or with a big lineup. We shall see if Robin and staff push the right buttons tonight. Well, the very first match of this season played in this building featured Hawaii against San Diego. The last match this season to be played in the Stan Sheriff Center features Hawaii and San Diego. We are playing volleyball, and the first set goes outside to Grace Froling, 6'5 freshman from Los Angeles, California. Did not play in that aforementioned season opener back in August. She gets the first point. We have no stats on her from August 30th, but uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of stats on her tonight, including that first kill. It was a great match for what you winning that one in five sets. Middle set goes to Amber Igidi. And she strikes first for the Rainbow Wahine. A little different strategy. Last night, Marin Yosia used the middle as a decoy for about the first set and a half. Now it looks like they're going to go to the middle early. Two 25 win teams. Toreros 25 and 5. Champions of the West Coast Conference at 17 and 1. Hawaii 25 and 3. They took the Big West crown at 14 and 2 in league. And that one put down by Tanae Fayed. She's the senior from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. 2.89 kills per set. One of four players for the Toreros named to the West Coast Conference first team. What an arm she's got, too. That was a gun of a shot there. And a little mix up there for Hawaii. So a free chance here for San Diego. They go slide to Megan Jacobson, dug up by Okino. But only momentarily, Megan Jacobson, 6'2 senior from Lakewood, Washington, comes into this match hitting 4'11 on the season, Cena. Number seven in the country. She simply does not make many mistakes, and she gets lots of kills. And that would be a service error. She's also on the all-tournament team here in August, uh, the only one to make that all-tournament team. And uh, so she's very familiar with the confines of the Stan Sheriff Center. Yeah, she averaged three and a half kills per set in that season opening tournament. And she hit for the tourney, 413. So just gaudy numbers from Jacobson. Here's Fayed again, the electric swing, but the block was up. As Sky Williams joined forces with Hana Helbig to turn that one back and we're tied at three. It's 6-3 and 6-2 on the outside. Pretty formidable block for the Rainbow Wahine there. So the serve by Amber Igidi, she goes deep corner to Fayed. Middle set goes to Froling, and she's able to find that far sideline. Grace Froling, West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year, also a first team selection, and she puts a pounding on the volleyball when it comes her way. Notice where she hit that ball out of the middle, so she doesn't, she's not a true right side, who stays in the right side, she'll hit balls out of the middle. Outside it goes to McKenna Ross off the top of the tape. Pinballed around and it's going to get on the Hawaii side of the net. You'll see it goes backside to Helbig. And she bounces it in front of that end line. And we're tied again at four apiece. This place just erupted when Helbig hit that. By eruption, I mean like seven to 8,000. That's right. Another fat crowd here at the SSC. Helbig, interestingly enough, did not play in two of the sets last night in the tournament opener against Northern Colorado. The first sets she missed all year. And how about that serve by Bailey Choi, the senior setter, transfer from Utah, putting Hawaii up one. Bailey Choi could get a contract as a knuckleballer in the MLB if she <laughs> wanted to for that kind of shot. Just has great no spin on the ball. Yeah, had a couple of aces. Last night, yeah, just falls off of a table. There she goes a little deeper with it. Back row bump set goes to Roxy Wiblin. It's dug up. Hawaii outside to Rossi. Tried to go high hands. Did she get a touch? Yes, she did. And it's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. Hold the phone. Discussion between the R1 and the line judge. And we'll see if they can come to an agreement there. Kevin Cole is the official atop the ladder. And he is going to overrule the touch call by the line judge. Kylie Kimura, by the way, the R2 on the floor. West Kawachi, Dean Samura, the two line judges. Hmm. I think that probably was the correct call. Not worthy of a challenge, in my opinion. Well, but Robin's going to challenge it. So she's going to do it. 
Never one to shy away from a challenge. Robin Amo quickly reaches for that laminated green card. You know, one of the reasons that, that uh, McKenna Ross has been so successful this last one third of the season, she knows how to go for the high hand shot. So that was no, that was not a mistake that she hit the ball high off the hands there, or in theory, high off the hands. I think she might have missed by a fraction, but uh, she's gotten really good at that. That's why her numbers have been so high the last one third of the season. Even though she's 5'9", uh, 5'10", five, five, she, but she's got a great jump and a great arm swing. We have said it throughout the years since this replay system was instituted that this, at least with the definition that we're working with via our cameras and instant replay abilities, this is the toughest review, the touch, no touch at the net. Absolutely. This is very tough to stop the ball from that angle it looks like there could be a flicker on that left hand and we'll see what Kylie Kimura ultimately decides very efficient with the reviews last night I'm going to predict that there was a touch you've been on it here well, we'll with see. these predictions we'll, we'll as see. of late Hello. drum roll please <laughs> touch it is and the Challenged by Robin Amo pays dividends. Give all the credit to Robin Amo. That time for her. standing by her hitter, McKenna Ross. I think McKenna might have told her, giving her a wink or something, saying, Coach, I got that. So she did the uh, challenge. Is there going to be a challenge of the challenge now? What's going on? Well, they can't challenge the same element. You can challenge another call on the same sequence though but interesting to see what Jennifer Petri might be communicating to Kylie Kimura Petri in her 21st season took over the program in 1999 was once again named the West Coast Conference coach of the year she has won that award now six times This is a quality and veteran coaching staff on the side of the Toreros. Well, Jen Petra just checking to make sure her lineup was correct. Served by Choi. They go outside. It's Fayad. The block was up. Tried to send it long. She does. No touch. And it's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. She tried to go high hands there as well. And the Rainbow Wahine up three. Fayad last night had the most receptions of anybody on the team at 31 receptions. Looks like Hawaii is also giving her the ball an awful lot. And a good serve there by Choi. Here's Fayad. Good chunk taken out of that block there. Rossi gets the set on the outside. It's blocked back. Middle set goes to Sky Williams. Soft touches it over. Pinballed around. Here's Fayad. Another swing. And this time she puts it down. Tane Fayad had 46 attacks the first time these two teams met on August 30th. She's, a, she's got a strong arm. She's lethal up front. I'll tell you, she hits the ball so hard. That time she turns back down the line. I think that uh, that time Yosia gave her way too much line. And fired with the serve. Outside. Here's Noreen Yosia on the outside pin. And she goes off the block and down for another Hawaii point. Notice she only had one block up. I think the reason why is that they're more worried about the middle attackers for Hawaii, and they are worried about the left side, Yosia. And Noreen can bring it with the best of them, as she showed there. The Big West Conference Player of the Year, Noreen Yosia. First team selection all four years of her career. And Hawaii returns it to sender. Brooke Van Sickle getting the gist of that one up next to Sky Williams. 5-7, Brooke going up against the 6-2, Megan Jacobson. Like I said before, Jacobson just not make many mistakes, doesn't get blocked very often. But Brooke has the last say there. Her timing impeccable. Blew the coaches away in fall camp and the practices leading up to the season where she was, according to the analytics measured in practice, the most effective blocker for Hawaii at 5'9". Pretty amazing. Yeah. By the way, 5'9", stretching it, I think. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> First thing in the morning. I think she's like 5'8", but plays like she's 6'2". Herman Tastad with the serve for San Diego. Crouched down the set by Choi goes to Williams. And it's going to be a miss hit there on the Torero side. And Hawaii up four here, 10 serving six. And it'll be Rika Okino back to serve. Thoughts on the start here so far for Hawaii. I like the fact that Robin, Robin stuck with the normal lineup. 
I think that this lineup has been very successful the last three weeks or so, and I think it's up to them to prove that they cannot do it. What a serve there by Okino. Forces a free pass over the net. Igidi in the middle, drops the hammer. And you're right, there was speculation as to whether or not Jolie Rasmussen would be inserted into the starting lineup. She made her return to the team last night after many, many matches out with the ankle injury. But instead, they stick with the lineup that's been working for them here as of late. I, I, I like what happened. We'll see if they can hold on. Overpass, a little joust there, played up on the Hawaii side. Here's you'll see on the opposite pin, the dink. Good sliding save there by Annie Benbo. And then the block at the net by Aijidi. Free ball coming again for Hawaii. Can they cash in? Aijidi gets it down. You know, Kanoa, there's a great matchup going on in the middle right now between Lauren Turner and Aijidi. Two of the best at their position. Timeout Toreros, Aijidi and company coming out like gangbusters in set one. Back and winning that match in five, it was a thriller to start this 2019 season. Another quality serve by Rico Okino. And that one just gets over. It was almost an excuse me swing there by Katie Lukes. Luke's actually the team leader in kills per set, 2.97, a second team all West Coast Conference selection. Interesting that uh, Hawaii started to use that short serve Ryan Suji was talking about in the pregame. They've been very effective with it. Here's you'll see a little bit off the net that time, popped up by Anna Newsom, the setter. So the bump set goes to Luke's, and Hawaii will play it back. One hand set by Choi, but she couldn't quite put together that nectar in the middle for IGD, so another point for San Diego. And Kenna Ross trying to get a little too precise there in that dig. And so Newsom will serve. Team leader in aces. Floats it over. IGD fields it and then gets the behind the head set and smashes it. What a great decision by San Diego to serve IGD in the, in the middle there. But look at IGD, how well she passes it. It's perfect. She is something else. She, really I mean, she never ceases to amaze. Dig of the night last night. That's right. Kept Hawaii in that match. Was all over social media last night. The NCAA's Twitter handle posting an Amber IGD dig highlight. Speaking of dig highlights, McKenna Ross almost came up with one right there. It would have been a dig kill, but it just missed the end line. I did, not, I did not see the NCAA posting it, but nice to see Amber getting the recognition she deserves. It was the, the play of the night, I thought. It was fantastic. Nine serving 13 here in set number one. Okino falling to the Terraflex with the pass. Here's Hana Helbig. Goes deep corner and it rattles around and trickles to the floor. Hana Helbig. 3.11 kills per set on the year, hitting 237. And six kills at 286 in two sets of work against Northern Colorado last night. As the Van Sickle serve goes into the net. What a hosting in the sub regional rounds for the first time since 2013. 19th overall time Hawaii is hosted in the NCAA tournament. Good pass there by Rossi. Oh, the set in the middle was mistimed, and an unforced error there by Hawaii gifts a point to the Toreros, and all of a sudden they're within three. It was Hawaii's set distribution already, I think, really good at middles and pins. Are, it's being distributed very nicely. Largest lead. the Rainbow Wahine was six. Igidi, the touch shot, pulled the string. And how about Amber Igidi start, C-Mac? Five attacks, five kills. Pretty amazing. She came ready to play. What do you think? I know her fans back in Louisiana are watching right now, even though it's late at night back there. Serves it to Fayad along that far sideline. Fayad 
gets the set and sends it long. No touch along the way. No, now they will say there was a violation against Hawaii. Violation, I think Sky Williams caught a little cable there. So a three-point differential. And here is Grace Berlin, tied for second on the team in service aces. Tough pass there by Ross. Helping! Oh, she's grooving right now. Three kills on three swings for Hana. You know, when she gets to rest the three rotations, she comes in so fresh. Her arm looks good. She's getting a good job. You know, she saw the block out of the corner of her eye taking her line. So she went cross court heavy. Similarities between these two teams, pretty striking. Step out goes to Jacobson. Williams blocks it back. San Diego takes another stab at it. They go to Fayad, and she is denied access. Big time roof there, Sky Williams. Fayad, I think, tried to come back down the line. The set was a little inside, but you'll see in Sky right there waiting. So 17 serving 12. Bailey Choi. With the serve, good pass there. Benbo slide goes to Jacobson, and she dinks it over and down. Yeah, one thing we haven't seen yet is the offensiveness of Anna Newsom. Uh, watch for her to uh, possibly start asserting herself. If her pin hitters and her middles aren't getting the job done, she'll just take over the match by herself. Two kills away from a triple-double in the season opener against Hawaii. Two kills away from a triple-double last night in the four-set win over Washington State. You'll see it had to readjust the approach. So a chance here in transition for San Diego. Jacobson blocked back. Newsom cross-court bump set, and that goes to Lukes, and she gets it off the block and down. When you talk about the similarities between these two teams, they're comprised very similarly in terms of their personnel. And then even in terms of the recognition, right? You have the setter of the year in the West Coast Conference in Anna Newsom. You have the player of the year in setter, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for Noreen Yosia. You have the... West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year on the side of the Toreros. You have the Big West Conference Freshman of the Year and Hanai Helbig on the side of Hawaii, and the similarities go on and on. We have two very good coaches as well. Six-time coach of West Coast Conference Coach of the Year, Jen Petri, just got a, another honor this year. That's right. Okino on one knee gets the pass, and then Sky Williams more or less just dunked that down. And Hawaii back up three. And Bailey Choi delivered a very precise set that time to Sky Williams. Sky Williams entered this match hitting 402 on the year, and that was thanks in large part to her nine kill 818 percentage last night against Northern Colorado. And that one sent off the Hawaii hands and out by Lucas. That was a smart shot. Block was well formed. Sky Williams got there a little late, but there's the touch by Noreen Yelsia. Hawaii hitting 526 here so far in set one, 318 for San Diego. This is a Toreros team that led the WCC in hitting percentage, in fact, was seventh in the NCAA in that category. Middle set, that's Lauren Turner, and she gets it down. 6 1 redshirt cross from Medina, Minnesota. And it is a 5-1 run being enjoyed by San Diego. They are within one. And the crowd trying to urge the home team on here at the SSC. Pass by Okino. Outside it goes to Van Sickle. Up off the trampoline. It's dug up by Peyton Douglas to the net. Sky Williams couldn't put it down. Pinballed back and forth. Williams in the middle, and she's able to just squeeze it by the solo block attempt of Lauren Turner. I thought I saw Sky Williams would get, take that overpass and just drill it. Instead, she put it, put, used two hands and didn't quite get enough on it. But then eventually got the kill. How about last night's performance? 8-18. That's pretty impressive. No kidding. Throw six blocks on top of that as well for good measure. Outside, swing by Lukes. And a heavy-handed strike once again by the 6-2 sophomore from San Clemente, California. Second team all of WCC this year. She knows how to tool the hands. She can go heavy cross court as well. Newsom, the southpaw serve. Pass on target, and Igidi 
able to level that nectar put up by Bailey Choi. This is the opposite philosophy of setting tonight than last night. Last night, Hawaii going a lot to the pins early. Tonight, going to the middle early. Maybe they were they were, they were gaming us last night, maybe. What do you think? Perhaps. Or gaming San Diego. Playing possum? Yeah. 11 attempts between Igidi and Sky Williams in the middle, to your point. And the block is up on Froling. Some freshman on freshman crime as you had Igidi and Helvig up against Froling putting up the wall. A lot of youth out there. Here is Noreen Yosia, had four aces last night. So that gives her 11 aces in her last two matches. Had seven on senior night here in this building. Another hot serve. Middle set to Turner, missed time. She just gets it over. So Okino bump sets to Helvig against the double block. She's blocked back, played off the twine by Van Sickle, and sent over. Advantage Toreros. They go right side, and it's Luke's going off the block and down. Ooh, fans not liking that call. Double hit will build that play. That was what the fans were booing. They thought there was a double hit there on Lauren Turner. Robin on low. So San Diego has to feel good about where they're at here in this set one. Being out blocked by Hawaii, out hit, and yet here they are within one. Make it two as Helvig strikes again. What a swing by Helvig. She's about the six or seven foot line way off the net. Where she finds her way around that block and down with heat. What a play. Largest lead in this set was six for the Bows. Torero's going right side. Froling hits it into the pin. And that's another point for Hawaii. They're up three. 23 serving 20. And that will prompt a timeout by San Diego. We will keep things here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Well, it was a very fun night of volleyball last night. First off, San Diego and Washington State, you're talking about a couple of nationally ranked teams, maybe the most difficult opening round match in the entire NCAA tournament, just from a matchup standpoint. San Diego wins that one in four. And then Hawaii playing Northern Colorado last night. And so many connections between those two programs as you had a homecoming for a couple of the assistants for Northern Colorado. Absolutely, John Haraguchi from Puno and uh, PEIU from Kamehameha. And P, by the way, at practice, had a special visitor come in to see him. And uh, she's actually a professor at the Ethnic Studies pro Program in the University of Hawaii. And uh, she could not come to the game. She's a huge volleyball fan. Could not come to the game. She told me, well, I'll be in the hospital. I got surgery. Her name is Dr. Daviana McGregor, and we wish her well. Absolutely. We know she's cheering from her hospital bed. Yeah, very well said, Sierra. You're in Pittsburgh. Able to give her a shout out, uh, and we hope that she is uh, in good spirits as she takes in tonight's round two match. All right, let's send it over to Ryan. Hey, thanks, guys. Well, the coaching staff here for the San Diego are not happy with their team. They're being very uh, adamant about their off blockers, so their wing blockers getting more involved with the middles. They say we can continue to let Hawaii's middles go one on one. So look for the uh, San Diego to kind of make that adjustment and get more blockers up on Hawaii's middles. Back over to you guys. Your thoughts on that, C-Mac? I'll tell you, if, if, if they start putting two blockers up, watch for a lot of tip shots going to where that blocker just came from. 23 serving 20 out of the timeout. And Brooke Van Sickle back behind the service line. Here it comes. Kept it in after the timeout. Outside it goes to Fayad. The block was up. The roof was up. Hana Helpy saying ah, ole. And it is a little ball here in set one. I think she got that one by herself, didn't she? That was a solo deal. But she moved out quickly to the outside. Good eye movement, good footwork. And then just straight down because Fayad is such a great player. And Van Sickle, that one tickled the tape. Outside, here's Fayette again. Hot swing dug up by Okino. Second touch centered by Yosia, and a free chance here for the Toreros. They go slide to Turner. And Lauren Turner puts it down to delay things here as Hawaii tries to snag this opening frame. What a sweet set from Hannah Newsom. Very deceptive and right on the money. Good swing by Turner as well. Manny Bembo, the libero, 5'3 sophomore from Frisco, Texas, with the serve. Right side, it's Helvig off the block. Played up on the Torero side, dumped down by McKenna Ross. And Hawaii takes set one, 25-21. Hold the phone. We are going to have a call by the R1. 
and Hawaii Honda dealers. Welcome back. Well, set one, the freshman, Hana Helvey, stepping up after sitting out two sets in the opener last night against Northern Colorado. Five kills on eight swings in that first frame. She looks fresh as a daisy, doesn't she? Five kills, one error. And she's got a block solo, and in on two other blocks, and on three of Hawaii's blocks. And that's really been a big difference tonight, Hawaii's five blocks to San Diego's none. And on the other side of the net, uh, it looks like uh, Katie Luke's still leading the way for the Toreros. Six kills in seven tries, hitting 857. How about the pair of freshmen, Helvig and Igidi, with 11 kills and just one hitting error between them. Only three hitting errors in that first frame as a squad for the Lady Bows. All right, for the latest information on UH Athletics, go to hawaiiathletics.com for UH news, tickets, videos, and more. Also visit UH's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube sites to follow your favorite teams and get current fan promotions. Set two underway. It is Ross from the back row, and she is denied by Lauren Turner, who has made a living out of solo stuffs this season. Unbelievable. She's got 20 block solos to lead the team and 88 block assists. She's really good at the net. Middle set, it's IGD Turner again by herself, turns it back. IGD the second time, couldn't catch it flush. Trolling from the opposite position, off the block and down. So a quick two-point start here for the Toreros in set number two. Trolling is, can be such a force that right side. A 6-5, just swings high and hard. Another good short serve by San Diego. A diving first touch there by IGD. Advantage Torero's Turner, the paintbrush swing, pancake save Choi. Ross two hands it over from the back row. So bump set goes cross court to Froling, and she's able to find that deep corner and get it past the diving McKenna Ross. Froling averaging 2.65 kills per set this season. Hawaii down three, and the overpass by Igidi. Froling again, high hands kept alive by Okino. Right side, it's Yosia the swing, blocked back. Good cover there by Ross. Cross court bump set, Van Sickle gets it down. Well, Hawaii had to scramble to finally scratch across its first point of this second frame. What a great side bump set by Marine Yosia. Put it right on the money for Van Sickle. Now Hawaii's in their, maybe their favorite rotation with Marine Yosia back to serve. I think one of the fans' favorite rotations as well whenever Noreen's back behind the service line. That was a hot one. Igidi handles the overpass. You always say it, C-Mac. It's as good as an ace. Yes, it is. It really is. Noreen did all the work, and Igidi got to go get all the... Noreen built the cake, and Igidi got the icing. What do you think? Seventh kill for Amber. Two serving three. Popped up there by Bembo. Right side. A swing there by Roxy Wiblin. She couldn't get it down. But Hawaii unable to formulate a real transition there. Now ping pong match above the tape. Bump set from Okino goes to Van Sickle by the double block diving save. Bembo. Right side it's Wiblin again. The dig. There's Okino flying in to save it. You'll see him. Oh, a pancake save by Bembo to keep it alive. Foling is dug up. And Hawaii will play it back. Helvig. Another save there by Fayad to the net. Joust there doesn't result in a winner. Here's Froling off of one foot, and Okino there to keep it alive. Helvig again off the double block, hands. Another pancake save, this time by Wiblin, and we play on. Fayad from the back row sends it long, and Hawaii wins a lengthy one. This might be the best defense we've seen all year by both teams. Rico Kino giving up her body. Benbo out there with a great pancake, stretches out. She had another one prior to that. The wolf the barrels are putting on a show, aren't they? I mean, bust out the syrup. That was a tall stack of oh, pancakes on that sequence. It was. Here in Pittsburgh. Here's Froling by the double block. There's Okino again, saves it over the tape. Slide goes to Turner, and off of one foot, Lauren Turner able to smack it down. And San Diego ends what was a 3-0 Rainbow Wahine run. Lauren Turner yet to make an error. Three kills and four tries. It's 
serve there by Wiblin. Here's Van Sickle, that little crisscross in the middle, and she just crushes it. Where did the blockers are from San Diego are saying, where did she come from? And she brought a trampoline with her. Little crossing play. Van Sickle just unloads. Wow. Served by Van Sickle, barely gets over the net. Turner couldn't get a flush hit on it. Here's Rossi. Dug up over the net by Benbo, but out. And it's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. In the middle of that sequence, San Diego was looking up at the R1, Kevin Cole, and they were asking for an interference penalty against IGD, but no whistle came. That is not a challengeable call either. Five serving four. Oh, good back set goes to Froling. But McKenna Ross, all by her lonesome, says, oh, no, you don't. McKenna Ross saying, you know what? I can play big as a blocker as well. She's been a big hitter recently, but how about this block? Goes up, presses over, and down. 23 blocks on the year coming into this match for Rossi. She got it there. IGD got it on that occasion. But it's sent back over. Chance here for Hawaii. Aijidi, the soft touch. One hand save. Pinballed around. Good diving save initially there by Newsom. Right side, it's Helvig. Blocked and roofed. Smothered that time by Turner and Fayad. First team block of the night. Great block by Fayad. He got a lot of that one. Pressed over. Helvig took a good swing at it, but Fayad too much. Turner there, too. Five serving six. Good spirited effort here in this match so far from both sides. Here's Rossi, cross court, got a touch, and it's a point for the Bows. The key is how many passes are going to be behind the three meter line for each team. Because when the passes go behind the three meter line, it causes all sorts of problems for the attackers. Rolling cross court and wide, no touch along the way, so another point for Hawaii. And that's gonna bring about a conversation between Jennifer Petri and her hitter, Grace Froling. I'm not sure if she asked Froling if she thought it went in. Whatever the answer was, it convinced Petri that she's gonna challenge, I believe, the in-out call. It was close from our vantage point. Maybe she's challenging the touch. Maybe that's what she was asking Froling. And so once again, Kylie Kimura will sport the headset as they take a look at this replay. Let's see if we can detect anything here. All right, so they're taking a look at the in or out. That definitely looks out from there. They can also, though, on a challenge for in or out, they can also check to see if there was a touch. And that right pinky, perhaps, on the Hawaii side, if anything, was the one that got a piece, but we'll see. I think you're right, Kanoa, you win that battle. One to one. Well, we'll see what the call is here from Kimura. And there was a touch. So a quality challenge there by Jennifer Petri. Just adds to the intrigue of the chess match between these two coaches. Yeah. Jennifer Petri, what a job she has done in her 21 seasons as head coach. San Diego has advanced to the NCAA tournament under Petri 19 of the last 21 years, yeah. including the last 10 seasons in a row. Coming off of a sweet 16 appearance a season ago. Trying to make it back there with a victory here this evening. Six serving seven. And it is Froling getting the whistle signal. Here it comes. Two-hand pass there by Ross. Right side, it's Helbig, and she bounces it just inside of that sideline. You know, Jen Petrick is the first one to give a lot of credit to Brent Hilliard, her first assistant, and Jimmy Lundgren. Hilliard's been with her 19 years. 
yards That's right. of the 21. He was actually head coach at one point. I think when she took a maternity leave or something. But she's got a, a great coaching staff. Yeah, you can't beat that kind of continuity. Certainly part of the reason why San Diego is what it is as a program. Out of system here, though, and a free chance for Hawaii. Middle set, Sky Williams rattled around. Faya don't get a swing out of it, just lollipops it over, though. Hawaii on the attack. They go outside. It's Rossi against the solo block, and she eats it up. And another point for the Bows. What made that whole play, why Hawaii was in control that whole play, was because they forced a bad pass off the serve. So nine serving six. Hawaii hitting 238 here in set two compared to 111 for the Toreros. Choi, her serve has been tough here this evening. Somehow Jacobson just this bumps it over and is able to get the point for the Toreros. Well, that's how you get a, an above 400 hitting percentage through the season. When you get shots like that to drop. Now she's really good at putting, placing her tips where there aren't any players. She's uncanny with that. Outside, you'll see her against the double block. Okino the cover. Choi goes back to Noreen. Tried to go line, got a piece of the block, gets the point. Hawaii up three once again. You know, Sia getting more action, I think, than she thought she'd get tonight, especially on the left side. The 25th Rainbow Wahine to win Conference Player of the Year. 10th in Hawaii's history as a member of the Big West Conference. How about that up by Rossi? High ball bump set Van Sickle timed the jump dug up by Benbo. It goes to Lukes, and Lukes pushes it wide, no touch. And that's another point for Hawaii. Rare error from Lukes. She's been pretty perfect tonight. Six kills, that's her first error in nine tries. Yeah, hitting 625 now. Largest lead of set two for Hawaii. Back down to three, it goes. It's like a mirror image of the first set. White jumped into a three-point lead about this point as they approached 15. So here is Cameron Tastad with the serve. Started her career at Oregon. As Sky Williams sends it long, no touch. So you have the connection with Cameron Tastad and the three Oregon transfers on the Hawaii side between Brooke Van Sickle, Jolie Rasmussen, and Kyra Hanawahina. Tastad, of course, from Solana Beach, California. I think a lot of the reason why she transferred back is to be closer to home. Van Sickle taking a little something off. Good layout save there, Tastad. Fayad is dug up by Okino. Choi has to chase down the second touch. Almost put down, in fact, put down on the two-handed set there. And San Diego just wasn't ready. Moray got lucky there, I'll tell you. This should have been a free, easy free ball. Instead, Torero was a little deep in their passing pattern there. Ross, five kills. How about the match she had against Northern Colorado? 14 put downs to lead Hawaii. It was the only player in double figures in kills for the Bulls. A touch shot there by Fayad. Easy pickings for Okino. The set to IG, though, on one of the few occasions where that connection not pure. She hits it into the twine. Yeah, the Troy IG connection has been pretty much flawless all year long. That one, though, set was uh, way too low. Bailey be the first one to admit that. Well, here is Newsom from Barcelona, Spain. The senior sends it over. Choi high balls it outside to Van Sickle. Up on springs, and she smokes it. Her, her arm looks so fresh, doesn't it? Her legs look real twitchy as well. This is a Hawaii team that has had a very thin schedule of action here in the last several weeks. So maybe it's all paying off now. They got all this energy. Talked about the rest versus rust debate last night as Marine Rocia gets ready to bring the serve across. A forceful serve that forces the overpass, and then IGD is dug up back over the net. You'll see her outside this time. The Van Sickle cross court. Good up there by Benbo. Touched over by Froling. Here's Helvig the other way. And a little high cheddar there for Fayad. Now, Hawaii got off to a, a fairly slow start last night, right? They were going basically swing for swing with Northern Colorado through the first two sets. 26-24 in both sets. And so 
after the match when asked about that, Robin Amo and the players felt like it wasn't necessarily a rust type of thing. It was maybe a little too much adrenaline, as you'll see it just misses that sideline. Yeah, I think that's what I, what I tried to explain last night. I really thought it was more adrenaline issue than the excitement of playing in front of 7,000, 8,000 people. Excitement of playing for the first time in two weeks. And all that led into a lot of those self-inflicted wounds last night. Roxy Wiblin with the serve. Pass by Okino. You'll see it was high and away to Helvig. Oh, she put a hit on it. Missed the floor wide, though. No touch at the net. And so another point for San Diego. Here they are back within two. And now we'll have a readjustment behind the service line by Wiblin. She moves closer to the San Diego bench to line up for this one. Down the line it goes. She picks on Rossi. Helvig bump set. It's going to result in an easy transition opportunity here for the Toreros. Turner, though, the set a little low, got under it and sends it out. So Hawaii gets to 15 first. We got a timeout on the floor. Bows by three in the second. Select few. How about this? NCAA Division I women's volleyball teams, there are 332 programs. But teams with an NCAA tournament appearance, 247. How about teams with an NCAA championship, just 10. Hawaii has three of them. Stanford has the most, but that is the elite company that is kept when it comes to national titles in NCAA tournament play. We will see that change over time as, uh, as the sport becomes more diverse, more parity develops. How about the offense? Let's check the offense of these two teams. Hawaii hitting a buck 82. The only reason they're ahead is that San Diego's hitting 0-4-0. Kind of the block there, Helvig and IGD forcing a free chance here for Hawaii. They go crossing pattern with Helvig in the middle of the net. And she blasts it off the hands and out for another Hawaii point. The bad news is they didn't fool San Diego. Two blockers are up. The good news is kind of Helvig's got a hammer. Eight kills now for the freshman from Stockholm, Sweden. Backside set, it goes to Froling, and she pounds it off the Hawaii block. And a uh, great battle of respective conference freshmen of the year on either side of the net. Here's Bembo with the serve. Backstepping the pass by Okino. They go right side. It's Helvi towards the middle of the net, though. Froling sends it back over on the second touch. IGD the dink. Good layout save there. Fayad. Fayad from her knees keeps it alive. Froling the full swing. And sliding along the floor. The dig by Okino. Helvi is blocked. Good cover there by IGD. And a free chance here now for the Toreros. Right side. Here's Froling down the line. One hand save Okino. Van Sickle from the back row. And keeping it alive is Wiblin. Right side Froling again. And this time it will not be returned. And they just kept feeding and feeding Grace Froling. And she finally found the Terraflex. Great exchange. How about Rico Kino? One hander there. Rolls, pops it up, lengthens the rally. The credit of San Diego, they keep firing away. 6 5 Froling just bearing it. Already 10 digs for Rika. Middle set, missed time. Daijiji just has to touch it over. Oh, but the set goes on the Hawaii side. Joust at the net, Hawaii plays it back. Ross tried to fist it off the block. Now it's the Toreros coming back with it. The touch shot by Wiblin, diving save, you'll see it. Thumb set to Helvig. There's Wiblin guarding the back line. Middle set goes to Jacobson, she's blocked by IGD. Froling slaps it over, Okino lays out on the save. Oh, you'll see a trips on Okino, and from her knees, Okino able to send it over. Here's Fayad, past the double block. Sliding save, Van Sickle. High ball set, Ross is roofed. An exhaustive sequence there, finally claimed by San Diego. Two, two sequences in a row, long rallies. That time, the big San Diego block has the last word. A great block by Grace Foley. She had most of it. Jacobson also in on the fun. And San Diego within one. Here's how good the defense is, Camille. Right now, uh, Lauren Turner's hitting 375 on the year. Tonight, so far, hitting 221. Jacobson, number seven hitter in the country, hitting 411. Tonight, hitting 286. That says a lot about the defense that's going on. It's amazing to sort of have this dynamic play out where these two teams met in the season opener and here they are, last match that will be played in Honolulu this season for the Rainbow Wahine win or lose. Uh, but just to see 
the evolution of these two teams, right, and some of the personnel changes. McKenna Ross did not play in that season opener. Remember, she was out that opening weekend of action for Hawaii. Froling didn't play in that opener for San Diego. So a different vibe here on the floor this second time around. Fayad, the dink blocked back by Helvey. They go right side, it's Froling. Her dink shot dug up by Igidi over the net and an easy put down there for Megan Jacobson. 4-2 San Diego run, and we are all tied up. Yeah, they're starting to assert themselves at the net. Megan Jacobson, actually, she can take over at the net. She is so such a great blocker and attacker. Benbo putting together a good service run here for the Toreros. Here's Rossi, and she gets Hawaii out of a sticky rotation. Four straight points there for the Toreros. And applying the tourniquet was McKenna Ross. Now, earlier in the year, Ross would hit that one into the into this middle block, and now she's working the edges of the block way better. Jacobson off of one foot, able to plug it past Ross and Williams. Well, Jacobson heard that I said she was hitting under 400. Now she wants to wrap it back up again. Yeah, she's now at uh, 364. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here's Froling. Ross the first touch. You'll see it goes back row to Van Sickle. And Jacobson got a good chunk of it at the net, but it finds the floor for another Hawaii point. And they are trading blows here in the latter portions of set number two. You wouldn't think that someone of her size would be a back row attacker like that, but she's got such great hops. She's got great vision. She knows how to stay behind that three-meter line, not step on it. And so they are, uh, they're, not, they're unafraid to use her when necessary. And Bailey Choi. That one tickles the tape and then taps the Terraflex. An ace for Bailey Choi. Her serve has been devastating so far this weekend. And there is Bailey Choi's younger brother, Eleu, who is going to be a member of the University of Hawaii men's volleyball program. Is he, some is, TV is he camera shy or what, <laughs> what do you think? No. Well, he's having fun either way. Slide, Jacobson dug up along the back line by Van Sickle. Choi facing the net, sets up Yosia and she gets the touch. Maureen Yosia just has a neck. And there's gonna be a debate here between the San Diego coaching staff and Kylie Kimura. Not sure what they're arguing, at least from our vantage point. We got a pretty good one where we're sitting, c -Mac. A clear touch off the block, it appeared. So I, I think Jacobson was saying that uh, either, either Bailey Choi or attacker crossed under the center line and caused a violation there. No call, so Hawaii have a little bit of breathing room here. 20 serving 17. The pass there by Benbo. Fayad the dink. And that's going to be a double hit called against Noreen Yosia. Yosia is going to argue that the first touch came on the block attempt. If that's the case, then she would be allowed to get the first official touch of the side up off the ricochet. And now we're going to have a conversation between Kevin Cole and Kylie Kimura. This is one of those that could result in a redo. I, I agree. This could be a redo. Kylie Kimura quick to, to help Kevin Cole make a distinction about whether whether or not the first touch was as a blocker by Maureen Yosia, or whether, whether she was a digger. It's a play over. They will play it over. A big call there. As again, the double hit would have given San Diego Noreen, the point, they would be within two, but I think Noreen Yosia making a good point. Yeah, Noreen Yosia was coming on the way down. She had not landed yet, so she was still an active blocker. Therefore, she gets two touches. Did look awkward. I can understand yeah. sort of from the official standpoint why it, it kind of looked like a potential violation, but via the replay, certainly Yosia is still a blocker on that initial contact. Yeah, that's the correct call. Not that that's going to satisfy Jennifer Petrie in any way, shape, or form. I like the way Kali Kimura stepped in, went to Kevin Cole quickly and said, you know, here's what I saw. I saw Mourinho Sia still coming down from the block, and so it was not an illegal double touch. 
Now she's uh, shown a cool control over there as the R2 the last couple of evenings. Here's Fayad, had to go lefty because the set tight to the net, and then they go ping pong match above the tape. Last touch out by the Toreros, and Hawaii has opened up a four point advantage. That prompts a San Diego timeout. The crowd loving it here at the SSC. Wish him a happy birthday. I hope he enjoys his late 20s. <laughs> Served by Choi out of the timeout. Slide, that's Jacobson. Oh, she put a heavy beating on it, but a great dig by Okino. Another pitter-patter competition at the net. And Hawaii now in transition. You'll see a block, but she saves it herself. Outside it goes to Ross, the touch shot. Fayad chases down the first touch. From the back row, it's Wibblin dug up. You'll see a high ball bump set Ross, two hands it over. Now the advantage for the Torero. Fayad against two blockers, just fires it through. Well, Hawaii had the advantage that whole rally, but San Diego is just so tough. They'll never say die kind of a defense. They just keep scrapping it during every play. Jacobson with a terrific kind of awkward play at the beginning of that rally. 18 serving 21. Here it comes from Fayad into the net. That is just the second service error for San Diego. No aces for them, however. Hawaii with two aces on its side. Outside set goes to Lukes. And Katie Lukes obliges. Participated in the U.S. Women's National Team tryouts back in March. But eight kills. Been a pretty low percentage, though, first time around against Hawaii. 0-37 in that five-set affair to open the season. Here's Tastad on the serve. Sends it in! Let by by former Oregon teammate Brooke Van Sickle. But it just gets a piece of that sideline and a huge, well-timed ace for Cameron Tastad. These last three points would be very difficult for Hawaii to get. They've got to get a good side out here. But look at that. Great, another great serve by Camstad. And a great save there in the back row by Peyton Douglas. That one pumped wrong by Katie Lukes, and that's a freebie for Hawaii. Yeah, we saw how hard it was for the Rainbow Wahine to cross the goal line in set number one. Two points away from getting a big two-set advantage here. Here's Okino, 23 serving 20, just gets it above the tape. Luke's through the double block, lay out one-handed save, Rossi. And a free opportunity here for the Toreros. What do they do with it? They go outside, Luke's by the double block. And Rossi couldn't get there on the second touch. Wow, Katie Luke's just throwing fireballs from the outside pin. He really is. He's got it going on. And look at Rossi with a one-handed save there to keep it alive. And Aquino saves, and then Luke's is just, on, as you say, on fire. 21 serving 23. Newsom, one of their better scoring servers behind the line. Here's Van Sickle up the ladder. And a net violation called against the Toreros. That's Froling coming into the twine. And aloha ball for Hawaii in the second. And you have a smattering of the fans here at the Stan Sheriff Center standing up on what is set point when the tradition for the longest time has been to stand up on just match point. Longtime campaign champion by my man Seamac over here. <laughs> Garcia with the jump serve. Outside here's Froling. Cross court and wide. No touch. Point Hawaii. And they take set number two. So in this second round match between the Rainbow Wahine and the Toreros, Hawaii will have an opportunity to crack. To be pleased with the way her team has played. And they continue to fend off the runs that San Diego has made to get back in the mix. They even tied that second set at one point, and the Rainbow Wahine able to create some space and finish the deal. I'll tell you this, Kanoa, Robert, I'm sure Robin Amo told her team between sets two and three, 
Be, pretend like it's the first set. Do not get too cocky about what just happened being up 2-0. Okino bumps it to Helvig off the block. Good cover there by Van Sickle. Back row set, it's Rossi. And then Bovi up. Fayad from the back row able to get the point yeah, for San Diego. Ross might take an out ball. Now, Robin Amo, it should be said, did not have the team retreat all the way to the locker room between sets two and three. She brought them back into the hallway just outside of the lower concourse area behind the tunnel. It's a good idea. It's a real short intermission. Better to keep a, a hot team hot rather than cool them off in the confines of the air conditioned locker room. Well, how about the hot hit by Hana Helvi? That one going off of the shoulder of the Torero defender. Okay, Helvi, uh, with all that international experience playing for the, the national team for, for, for uh, Sweden, has really paid off. She is calm and cool and collected. Three chance here for Hawaii. You'll see it goes backside to Helvig, gets it down again. And Hana Helvig, the first hitter on either side of the net to reach double figures and kills. She has 10. You'll see and knows where her bread is buttered. Go to the heavy hitter Helvig when she's hot. It's buttered in Sweden. <laughs> Two serving one. Short jump serve there by Van Sickle. Slide goes to Turner. And a good job by Ross to get a chunk on that block attempt. Here's Helvig again. On that opposite position, she is putting in work. And how about the bump set all the way across court by Rico Kino? She's not only digging, but she's got some assists going on tonight as well. Rico Kino, that is her third assist. Yeah, she has turned that bump set either way, either pin, to a bit of an art form here this season. Helvi got that one blocked back. Van Sickle keeps it alive to the net. Igini gets it down. Another highlight real moment. For this Rainbow Wahine squad. You know, they're just so quick. They battle so hard. They play to the last ball drops. You gotta love their, their passion for the game and their perseverance on every rally. I mean, nobody celebrates quite like Amber Igidi. Slide goes to Turner. And with very little resistance at the net. That'll quiet the crowd. Laura Turner, nice swing there. So two serving four here early on in set number three. Hawaii taking the first 25-23, taking set two 25-21. A lot of volleyball left here in this round two matchup. Rossi on the delayed set that time. She kind of pulled her inward towards the middle of the net area. You'll see on the set and Rossi obliging. It's almost what they call a tandem, one player on top of another player. Rossi snuck in there to take a different set other than that same set to the outside, the four set. It's becoming very easy to block. Right side. The block was up. I'm not sure if Luke's swing. It did get a piece of that block, but Luke's able to get it down on the Hawaii side for the point. And Rossi did not quite get over the net on that one. That's how there's space between Rossi's hands and the net. Luke's yet another kill. Number nine. Three serving five. Hawaii out of system here. High ball bump set goes to Ross. Two blockers up. Good dig there by Benbo, but it goes over the net. So Hawaii on the attack. Here's Helvig. Winds up, uncoils, and a layout save in the back row. Fayad the dink shot. Sliding save there by Yosia. Back bump set to Ross from Okino. A work of art again. Well, I'll tell you, Okino will be the first one to say, I did not mean to set that ball to the nine foot line. She'll be the first one to say that. She'll take the assist anyway, but how about Rossi being aggressive from the nine foot line? Love that play. Six serving three. Hawaii hitting 500 here to start this third set. Same percentage as San Diego, except Hawaii with six kills, San Diego with three. Right side, big swing by Froling, and she's able to tool the block. San Diego, the West Coast Conference champions for the 11th time, fifth time this decade. Well, you know, that was a great shot by Grace Froling. Normally, she's been going cross court, so Hawaii moved their block in. She noticed that, and so she went back down the line where there was space. Did a nice job of tooling the line blocker. Good two-hand pass there by Ross. Middle set goes to Williams. 
Blocked out a piece. So right side set goes to Froling. Soft touched it, blocked back, rattled around. Froling another swing, and it's tapped back over by Yosia. Froling a third time. She two hands it over. Ross plays it along the sideline. You'll see it jumps up and soft touches it past the block. And a good save there by Fayad. Froling blocked back and a net violation against Hawaii. And that's going to be a point for San Diego. Hard fought. Yeah, I think Noreen Yosia got into the net that time, but what a rally. Hawaii ranked 18th in the latest ABCA poll. San Diego 20th. Just to add to the similarities between these programs. But what you the 12 seed though here in the NCAA tournament as you'll see it gets denied, turned back by Froling. Froling, who again didn't play the first time around. She was sort of eased into her role this season because she's a freshman. A pleasant surprise, certainly, in terms of her expeditious development for Jennifer Petri and company. Here's Ross on the opposite side, went line, missed it wide, no touch. And just like that, San Diego jumps in front, a 4-0 Torero run, and we are going to have our first Jolie Rasmussen sighting here at this juncture of set number three. 19 kills on August 30th against this San Diego team. She'll be facing a different end blocker, though, in 6-5 Grace Bowling. Let's see what she See if she can help Hawaii get out of this rotation. Yeah, hit 390 in that season opener. Middle set, Williams laying the smackdown. Great set from Bailey Choi. I think everybody in the gym was thinking the ball was going to be set to Rasmussen on the outside because she got subbed in. But you know what? It's a great pass, and Sky Williams up early on that one. No block. And we saw the numbers against Northern Colorado last night for Rasmussen making her return after missing action was injured in the seventh match of the season first appearance since September 12th and how about that Rika Okino the magician on the save and Brooke Van Sickle finishing the play. So Hawaii won that rally with two left hands. A one handed left handed dig by Rika Okino and a left handed tip over by Brooke Van Sickle. Go figure. <laughs> there's one left hand and there's the other left hand great reaction to the facial expression of Rico Okino perhaps nobody showing the vast level of improvement throughout her career more than Rico Okino as that one's pounded down by Megan Jacobson and that's why Megan Jacobson was first team all WCC that's why Megan Jacobson was on the all tournament team here on August 3rd at the Rainbow Lahine Classic Great shot. But a service error gives it right back to Hawaii. And they're up 9-8. Rico Okino will retreat back behind the line to serve. So again, the return of Jolie Rasmussen, the options that it provides for Robin Amo, does not even feel compelled to turn to her until this third set because that starting rotation was playing so well early. Step out goes to Jacobson, one hand save Rico Okino. It's becoming repetitive. Ross dug up with two hands by Douglas. Tight to the net, the set, Faya touches it over. Rattled around on the Hawaii side. Van Sickle the swing. Good dig there by Benbo. Back row set, it goes to Wiblin. Just taps it over. Troy tried to catch a nap and nothing doing. Bump set to Van Sickle, two blockers up. She tried to shove it past them. Now the Torero's bringing it back. It's Wiblin dug up by Okino. Choi high balls it to Van Sickle off the block. Diving layout save Newsom and then put through the block and down by Megan Jacobson. Good effort on all sides. Well played. Rally that time. Solid volleyball all the way around. And San Diego once again. In that last punch in. And again, it's Megan Jacobson. Tied for the fifth time already in this third set. San Diego playing for their season. Down 0-2. Right side, it's Jolie. And a net violation called against the Toreros. And Rasmussen's first swing results in a point. And so Rasmussen to the bench. Noreen Yosia comes in, but here's a good look on the net cam at that Rasmussen swing. serve. It's a good one. Good handle there by Bendo off of one leg. It's Jacobson deep corner and in. She 
she's really living up to her number seven in the country kill percentage reputation. Jacobson now hitting uh, almost 400, eight kills. Pass down the serve. Floats it deep, the pass there by Ross. Middle set, IGD slams it home. And they're trading blows again here in this middle portion of set three. And her connection that time, ball set higher for IGD. She likes it a little higher, she'll, go, she'll chase it. Largest lead for Hawaii in this third set was three. We have been tied six times. Oh, on the second touch, the swing by Anna Newsom. She is. Her reputation, one of the more offensive-minded setters, and being a southpaw, it's quite an advantage. The first time we've seen her bust this out tonight, though. Yeah, she's actually, that's her third attempt. I think the others were not that left-handed swing like that. That was impressive, to say the least. And here she is now with the serve. Oh, and it's an ace. Ross unable to handle it. And San Diego jumps ahead, 12-11. Robin Amo will take a timeout. Doesn't like what she is seeing transpire here the last few sequences. We'll take a break as well. Winner of this match in the next round of the NCAA tournament to be played in Madison, Wisconsin, as Van Sickle sends it long from the back row. So San Diego by two. A 3-0 Torero run. And Anna Newsom again sends it across. You'll see it. Sets up Ross with two blockers up. And she sends a sizzler past Benbo in the back row. That does not look like the swing of someone who was recruited as a libero <laughs> and defensive specialist. She's more than carrying her load on the outside, that's for sure. Finally earning some wreck this year. Big West Conference honorable mention. First time in her career. Good save there by you'll see a body's hitting the floor all over the place. Torero's on the attack. High ball outside. It goes to Froling. And she gets it home. Nice control shot by Froling that time. Good, good vision of where the block was. Block was a little squishy down the hole. Just eased up and a little soft one. In the middle, smart shot. Tenth kill for Froling, so the two conference freshmen of the year. Froling on the side of San Diego, Helvig on the side of Hawaii. The only players in double figures in kills so far this evening. You'll see on the set, goes backside to Helvig. Great layout save by Newsom. Free chance coming here for the Bulls. You'll see again goes to Hana, off the fingertips of the block. The up there by Newsom, bump set. Froling, two hands it over. Okino chases it down. Bump set, you'll see it goes to Ross from a standing position. Couldn't find the floor. Sank back to Hawaii's side. Here's Williams in the middle. Didn't get all of it, got enough of it. And yet another long rally that this crowd appreciates. Again, Okino in the middle of all of that action. The smallest person on the court, one with Ben Bolt, two little barrels. Just put on a great show tonight. Yeah, we're seeing bodies on the floor, both sides of the net. San Diego playing for its postseason life right here. And Hawaii trying to see if they can somehow conjure up a ticket to the Sweet 16. Middle set, it's Turner. There's Okino from one knee. Choi sets up Van Sickle in the back row. Chased down on the second touch there by Bembo. And slapped over by Fayad. Hawaii on the attack. Here's Rasmussen, the touch shot. Benbo comes sliding in, and a net violation against the Toreros. Every time Jolie takes a swing over there, USD comes into the time. I think she's going to start swinging with that, though. She had a pretty good set. I guess she saw four hands across. She didn't have a shot, maybe. I don't know. But I really think she ought to start banging away at those, even if it's the banging for the high hands. So we're tied for the eighth time here in set three. How about that serve? Bailey Choi again. The knuckler. Too hard to handle for Ann Benbo. Dad Barney, in, Dad Barney in the hat. Like that one. It's just got no spin at all. It just That's just filthy. It is. It is. Barney credited with being Bailey's first real volleyball coach throughout her youth. 
And Fayed sends it long, no touch up front. And Hawaii up two. They have put together four straight. Bailey Choi. Take your internet with you. Spectrum Internet customers get free unlimited access to over 4,000 Wi-Fi hotspots across the islands. And of course, one of those hotspots right here, the Stan Sheriff Center, a particularly hot spot this evening with a huge crowd once again for the second consecutive night. How about Rika Okino? Set one, one dig since then, 17. And many of them have been mesmerizing by nature. Another tough serve. Rolling blocked and roofed. Sky Williams saying, uh uh. <laughs> 5 0 rainbow run. Here it comes from Choi again. Forces the overpass. Oh, but it handcuffed Jolie at the net. It was just above the tape, and she was a little uncertain as to how to attack that thing or how to receive it, and she got caught in the land of in-between. <laughs> so a break there for the Toreros. Here's Benbo. Good things have happened for San Diego, and Benbo's been behind the service line. Jolie Rasmussen comes through from the outside position this time. Jolie Rasmussen, again, missing so many matches throughout the year after getting injured back on September 12th against West Virginia. Has made her return here this weekend. Important, you think, for Robin Amo, not just to help spark things in this third set, but just to get Jolie some action as they consider possibly moving forward here in the tournament. Absolutely. You know, she, uh, she came back very slowly, because remember, she said, two ankle injuries on one side and seven on the other. So she's being extra cautious in how she came back. Out serve. And a big break there for the Bows. They're up three, 19-16. And it is becoming now or never time for the Toreros. Loose in front row right now. Hawaii's well, got to be careful on tight passes for Newsom to start taking over. Okino into the net. One of the few things she hasn't done incredibly well this evening. Right side, here's Rasmussen through the block and down. Jolie with four kills. Matches her output from last evening's match. Remember, she had 19 of those in August. Now she's just having those. She's playing three, six rotations then. She's only playing, look how happy she is. She's only playing three yeah. rotations now and only playing half a set. Well, how good it must feel to be back in the mix. Back in action, Jolie Rasmussen. Jacobson off of two feet. Good save there by Yosia, and then a mishandle on the set by Amber IG. We have seen her come through on those assists in other instances that time, though it jostled around in the palms. Yeah, she, she takes a lot of pride in the ability to set the ball and play defense. That time didn't work out. Official attendance numbers just under 7,000 through the turnstile. Yosia high and away to Helvi. Caught the fingertips of the block, the save by Fayad. Cross court, it goes to Loops. It'll be played back. Right side, here's Van Sickle. Cross court and in. A little too hot to handle for Jacobson. It's Van Sickle's Gary and Lisa. And this Gary, former Rainbow Warrior player in the 80s, mid 80s. That's right. Played from 88 to 90. Mom Lisa played at Hawaii Pacific University and also professionally in Argentina. Here's Turner on the slide. Right there is Okino. Ross uncorks one through the block and down. And Hawaii has opened up a four-point advantage 
And a timeout signaled by San Diego. Largest lead of this third frame for the Rainbow Wahine. Once again, these will be the three hardest points of the night for Hawaii to earn. Three. There you see this is updated, including tonight's work. The total team blocks as we bring you the Akamai roofing report. Let's check in while we have a break with Ryan Kalei-Suji. Hey, thanks, Kono. Well, the coaching staff here on San Diego sideline, they've turned from tactics to more motivational. Uh, right now, they're telling their team, look at how hard you're having to work for just one point. One point. All of the defense, all of the rallies that are going on, just to get one point. You have to keep scratching. You have to keep going. We didn't think it was going to be this hard, but we have got to fight. Back over to you guys. You know, Kano, I was going to say in that uh, the roofing report we were talking about, a lot of the fans from mainland might be watching this now. They don't know that assistant coach Angelica Jungquist, four-time All-American, <laughs> promises to, to do a lap for each one of those blocks, and she hates to run. Yeah. But it's been a motivational tool for Hawaii that she will be out there running to make sure she pays off her debt. Isn't the marathon tomorrow? <laughs> Maybe she should just do that. <laughs> Call it even. Catch the greatest plays, biggest blocks, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Out of the timeout, Hawaii by four. Bump set cross court goes to Lutz, and it'll be returned over the net. Another try here for the Toreros. Lutz, a heavy-handed swing dug up by Okino. She's digging everything. Lutz again is able to flame through it past the Hawaii block. Three terrific swings by Lutz. I'm telling you, those are as good a hits as we've seen this ship stand short center all year. Finally stopped going cross court, took the line, got the easy point. Well, not so easy, I should say. How about 20 digs now for Rico Okino? Middle set, Aichini misses the floor wide. Bengo thought about taking a stab at the save, let it by wisely. Two-point differential. And if you're San Diego, this is the server you want behind the line on the Newsom. Goes down the line. Ross pass tight to the net. One hand set to IGD. Just soft touched it over. Maybe it's gotten away with a palm. But she makes up for it with two palms. The block right next to Hana Helvey. And San Diego bench up. Calling that uh, they saw Kevin Cole should have called it. He now is going to give him a yellow card for over protesting. The yellow coming out of the back pocket of R1 Kevin Cole. Conversation continues between Jennifer Petri and Kylie Kimura. Take another look. Yellow card officially being given. I do think, though, that Petri and the bench for San Diego may have had a beef there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, the overpass. You'll see a backside. Here's Helvey. That's dug up by Newsom. So the bump set coming from Benbo. And Luke is rejected. Sky Williams makes them all rise here at the San Sheriff Center. Aloha ball for the match. 8,000 tickets sold, 7,000 in the building. And Aikidi almost hits her at the middle. Sky Williams in the back of the dome. <laughs> There'll be some comments in locker about after the match about that, I'm sure. So they will remain standing. It remains Aloha Bowl. And it is Roxy Wiblin to serve. Pass by Van Sickle. You'll see a right side. Here's Helby. Net violation called against San Diego. And that is it. Hawaii wins. A kahi, a lua, aloha to advance to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. All I can say is 